with Major Taylor Velodrome in Indiana. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, should we be copying pro cyclists? Are they really the gold standard of bike riding? We've got a new bike from Bentley with quilted handlebars, trail dogs, which is a thing, and lots more besides. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that it's finally happened. The first e-bike to launch that's completely indistinguishable from a normal one. 3T have just launched their Exploro Race Max Boost, whose frame set is visually identical to the normal Race Max. And then it uses a lightweight Marla hub motor to provide the drive. Right, let's see. Race Max, Race Max Boost. Race Max, Race Max Boost. There you go. Could you tell? Nope. No, me neither. And now we also learned this week that when Matej Mohoric's seemingly endless descending skills do finally run out, he's like a cat with nine lives, unbelievably walking away from this horror crash. Despite not having any major injuries, he is unfortunately out of the Jira, but wow, it could have been so much worse. And lastly this week, we learned what Chris Froome listens to whilst he's training. It's an electric mix, shall we say, a bit of Carly Rae Jepsen and Call Me Maybe, some Sugar Babes and even Five. Wow, not that many 37 year olds would admit to listening to that man. Do you want to rate it out of 10? Um, I'd say a solid seven. I used to listen to Sugar Babes when I was 12. <laughs> Nice, I, I'd probably have given it a two, but then I noticed that he finishes with uh, Phil Collins. So uh, it's an eight from me. Phil Collins who? I'm gonna to choose to ignore that man. You must know who Phil Collins is. Nope. In the air tonight? No. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. Not no? ringing okay. any bells now. Right, well, if you would like to listen to Chris Freem's playlist, then he's handily put a link to it uh, in his Strava profile. So uh, yeah, let us know what you think. You may or may not want to listen to Chris Room's playlist, but what would happen if you copied his training? And are there other things that we should or shouldn't copy that the pros do? Now, I don't know about you, Manon, but when I was younger, I used to study everything the pros did and then try to copy it. And that even extended at one point to growing a Belgian mullet so hard. That's was commitment. Trying. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Now, in hindsight, that one probably wasn't a good idea. I say probably. But um, but it did get me thinking. I mean, how many other things was I doing that was, was just a bit wrong, basically? Well, I can think of a few. Bike position being one of them. Pro cyclists will spend hours and hours on their bikes, tweaking their position to be as aerodynamic as possible. But just because they do it doesn't mean we should. For example, if you're too low, you could actually lose power. And well, nobody wants that. And you don't want to have a crippled back either. No, true. Being super stretched out and super aero isn't necessarily the most comfortable thing when you're not used to it. But what we can copy is the thought process behind it. So being as aero and efficient as possible while still being comfortable and still being powerful. Exactly. Another one is that we shouldn't copy the bikes that the pros ride in terms of weight. As we all know, there is a UCI weight limit to the bikes that the pros ride, but there are plenty of manufacturers that make bikes under the UCI weight limit. So technically you could have a bike that is lighter than Chris Froome's. Oh, that's a bit of a low blow, that one, man. Poor Froome, he's a bit sensitive about his disc brakes weighing him down, isn't he? Yeah. You might actually also uh, need a pro cyclist size paycheck to pay for your sub 6.8 yeah. kilo bike there. But uh, anyway, a couple of other things that we've always said don't do, do not copy the pros. And ironically enough, the pros now can't do them either. First up, yes, we are talking about the super tuck. A hugely controversial ruling from the UCI now means the pros can't do what we technically still can do, but we don't think you should do it. It's sketchy in races and it's even sketchier on open roads too. Yeah, leave it to Hank to do that one. I did notice at the weekend as well actually that the imaginary time trial bar position, which has been banned from road racing, hasn't been banned from mountain bike racing. Really? Yep. So if you still want to do that one, then just buy yourself a mountain bike and get all the aero benefits that that now brings. Hmm, yeah. true. Thinking of riding off-road, one thing that some people are starting to do is riding and racing multiple disciplines. Pauline Fran Prevost started it, Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Der Poel continue to do it, Tom Pidcock's doing it, Peter Sagan has dabbled, and it's something we definitely think you should copy. Yeah, definitely. I think it makes people better bike riders. You did that, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, admittedly I'm not a great example, but 
I was probably better than I would have been otherwise. Exactly. So there we go. Uh, now, we mentioned Matej Mohoric's horrific crash at the Giro. Unfortunately, there have also been a few more over the past week, including Mikael Lander crashing into a traffic island. It was a brutal exit to the race for him. But unfortunately, it's just not that uncommon. Do not copy the pros here. And we don't mean by riding into traffic islands, but when you're out on a group ride or in a race, dare we say it, look out for each other and point things out. True that, very true. Training, that's another no, don't copy. Now we touched on this actually a few weeks back. A lot of people, myself included, fall into the trap of training to try and win grand tours when we're not even racing them. So pros train 20, 25, 30 hours a week Part of that reason is to get resistance to fatigue so that they can then put out big power at the end of a 200 kilometer race and then do that back to back up to 21 days on the bounce. However, if you are not doing that, if you're racing for 60Ks or doing 40K group rides, then you can afford to just focus on getting fast instead. Plus, doing 20, 30 hour weeks in addition to normal life can leave you pretty knackered, as Hank actually found out. Indeed, yeah. What you could do instead, though, is copy the way pros ride their bikes. So technique. Now that, I think, is the gold standard of bike riding. So watching the way pros pedal or the way they hold their body still or the way they go around corners or the way they climb out of the saddle. Seriously, watch it. GCN Plus, subscribe now to see how pros do it. Mm. And probably the most important one that we're nearly forgetting, style. Style, man. Definitely one of the most important ones. I think in principle, yes. A lot of very, very stylish pro cyclists out there. But you've got to have a little think about which sponsor you want emblazoned across your chest. There's Do some you interesting want to be ones, yeah. Advertising flooring or an international chemical giant. Mm. Choose wisely. Indeed. Would you go for that? Yeah. All right, there we go. So let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Should you be copying pro cyclists? If so, what? And are there any things that you definitely don't think we should be carrying over from professional cycling? Uh, now, Manon, um, Connor is going to uh, beam in to the GCN show now with a very, very important update. Si, Manon, some groundbreaking research has been done recently on the CERN Abbas hill figure, which we rode past in our in pursuit of spring ride. Now this is just really, really interesting, okay? Researchers from the National Trust have been analyzing sand particles on the chalk hill figure to determine when sunlight last hit those um, sand particles. And it turns out that some particles haven't been touched by light since 900 AD, which is, well, 800 years earlier than historians thought the hill figure was drawn, which is just a huge, huge margin, isn't it? It's way, way earlier than everyone thought. Now, at this time, there was an abbey in the area around where the chalk hill figure was drawn. So for this reason, the theory has changed around Cerna Bass. So because of the abbey, it was a deeply religious time in that area too. Well, historians think that no one would have ever drawn a man with a phallus on because it would have been deeply offensive. So the theory now is that the hill figure was drawn it's a kind of religious symbol. And then later on, someone added a massive phallus and no one knows why. Theories are abound again. Deep mystery shrouding the Cernabas hill figure, but super interesting, isn't it? I mean, did not expect that when we rode past it back in the uh, start of spring. What do you reckon? So if you have sex on the hill figure, particularly on the phallus, you will boost your chances of conceiving. So couples have been coming here for centuries. Literally. Yep. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Here's your lesson over for this right. one. Well, thank you very much, Connor. Interestingly, Manon, uh, he wasn't giggling every time he said the word phallus this time. It's probably because he didn't have uh, three children sitting on the bench laughing at him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He was doing it in a random park, I noticed, which uh, made it, would have made him slightly sheepish. But anyway, GCN inspiration now. We're going to start with a quick comment from our winner last week, who was, if you remember, Light Burn Photo. Anyway, his actual name is Kirill Sharikov. He says, uh, thank you for picking my shot. I'm just a bike mechanic here on the island, so I'll take pro photographer status as a compliment. Uh, that was because Lloydie uh, thought the photo was so good, it must have been taken by a pro. So there we go. Thanks for getting in touch, Kirill. 
Right, moving on to this week's winner. And in third place, winning some Italian-themed socks, we've got Kay West. Chilly morning in Toronto, in the beaches area, woke up early to catch a sunrise and have a peaceful ride. Nice. Looks so nice. That does look amazing, doesn't it? Who's the figure, though? Not a peaceful you, ride you if you're taking a the, picture. Ridden up, put the camera on a timer, ridden back down. Undoubtedly. There we go. Hank would do that. Yeah, he would. Absolutely, he would. Um, and then he'd take a selfie just for good measure. <laughs> uh, right then, uh, second place this week, winning a GCN Pink Elite water bottle uh, and Italian themed striped socks uh, is this video. Oh, yes, we've got a video uh, from Tian Delang. Cycling with my friend to the top of Northcliffe, Johannesburg, to catch the beautiful sunrise before heading down for a coffee and a catch up. Views like this are what get me out of bed on winter mornings. I tell you what, if we had skies like that in the winter, I think I'd get out of bed yeah. as well. That is cool. I like Very that. Very nice. Wish our winters were like that. I wish our summers were like that, man. Yeah, and our it's true. As well. Yeah. Nice. Uh, right, who's the winner this week? And the winner is this week is Street Beers, and he wins Epic Climbs Copperberg t shirt, Italy t shirt navy blue, and a classic hoodie. Wow. Big prizes. And yeah. I did my first 100 mile ride at the weekend with my dad for prostate cancer. Today my legs felt good enough for a 25 kilometre ride, ended up at the local taproom bottle shop and bumped into a mate. Three beers later and my legs stopped hurting. Who needs a cafe, cafe stops? Beer stops are the way forward. There you go. Yeah, numb the legs a little bit. Yeah. So there we go, went on street beers. Uh, if you're wondering, it was uh, Dan who uh, picked the winner this week, but uh, still, there we go. That is cool actually, isn't it? Just goes to show that not all bike rides have to be epics. Uh, just cruising to the local tap room. It's very trendy, that, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't know what a tap room was until about two weeks back. <laughs> uh, right, anyway, uh, thank you very much, as always, for sending in all your amazing pictures and uploading them to the GCN app. We will pick three more winners next week. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling shorts now, I'm going to start with some news that we originally saw on Streets Blog USA. So it was an article that was based on some new research published in Transport Review, which uh, I'm guessing is one of your favourites. If it's not uh, B BMJ, it's not worth my time. Whew. Journal snob, I like it. Uh, now, uh, seriously though, this one is good actually. So it's a piece of research um, that's taken data from 17 different countries on six different continents. It's looked at cycling behavior in cities and they found that in cities where there is a high rate of cycling, you have as many women cyclists as men. However, in cities that have lower rates of cycling, women are disproportionately underrepresented. So if you want to get more people into cycling, planners, listen up. You need to focus on women. The main concern is heavy moving traffic and feeling quite nervous. So safer cycling routes, more women in cycling, nicer cities, simple. Simple, there we go. Uh, now last week we, um well, we kind of teased Tom Pidcock and Matthew Vanderpool for underperforming at the first round of the Mountain Bike World Cup. Both of them only managed to get top tens. So anyway, this weekend, uh, they both made amends. Matthew van der Poel finished second. Tom Pidcock, meanwhile, absolutely demolished him to take the victory. It's actually the biggest ever winning margin at the Novemester World Cup round. And there's actually been 12 rounds there now. And Tom Pidcock actually said after the race that he was born to be a mountain biker. Yeah. Hank said that after our ride last week as well, you know. Hank. Ah, yeah. So it's fair to say I could do with a bit more practice. He was a proper legend for doing that. He did commit, big time. Um, can we just, by the way, before we leave mountain bike for a minute, have a quick shout out to Catherine Pendrell, right? So two time world mountain bike champion. She had a baby at the end of January. She's already back racing World Cups. She finished 23rd at the weekend. Isn't that? That's impressive. That's utterly phenomenal, isn't it? So yeah, fair play. Yeah. Some more exciting news now, and the UCI Track Champions League officially launched today. It's a brand new international track cycling event that condenses the World Cup format into just a few exciting hours. Uh, six rounds over six weeks. At the end, we will crown the best men's and women's sprinters and best men's and women's endurance athletes as well. The only downside about all of this is we've got to wait until the autumn for it. I'm sure it'll be worth the wait. I think it will. 
a bit of tech news for you now. And a question we often get asked is, how can I get my balance bike for my child to match my car? Well, if you own a Bentley, listen up. Yeah, technically if it's a Bentley, it's probably more like to be grandkids, isn't it? But still, relative bargain, 450 quid or $600 for this particular balance bike. And it is no ordinary balance bike. Let me, uh, let me quote from the designer, Chris Cook. You ready, man? Go on. Okay, the frame was inspired by the power line that can be seen on our cars and is reproduced in the key line that flows around the frame of the bike. The seat has hidden diamond knurling to improve grip when steadying the rider and the handlebars feature Bentley diamond quilting for comfort. Wow. Wowzers. I'm going to ask uh, Salah Talif, diamonds in my saddle now. Absolutely. And quilted bar tape. Yes, please. Um, yeah. Who who would have thought it would take a car manufacturer to invent proper nice bar tape? But there we go, quilting, brilliant. Now something a little different. Our mates at Commute have sponsored a book which comprises of inspirational cycling stories. It's been compiled by a man called Jonathan Hurd, and it's called Cycling Through a Pandemic. It's a collection of stories of riders who use their bikes as a mean of escaping the difficulties of COVID-19. And all proceeds will be going to the World Bicycle Relief, so check it out. It's a good one. Yeah. Our mates at Shimano have released a fantastic video called A Dog's Tail, featuring something that us roadies but don't really get. Trail dogs. Oh yes, check it out. Those guys are sunglasses and only bigger than your side. <laughs> and you say uh, cyclists can't have a canine sidekick. Well, check this out from US pro cyclist Alexi Van Mullen. Right, we have got some competition results for you now. Do you remember the Alter Lock, which is like a bike alarm and tracker that we, uh, we were giving away a couple of weeks back now? Well, 10 of you have just won one. So are you ready? Okay. Mike Mardell, Hasim Karaman, Tom Sorrell, Steve Hunter, Dave Purdy, Carl Sealby, Michael Walker, Julia Puttinger, Adam Cena, and Barry Nolan. Congratulations to you lot. If you didn't win, don't worry. There's actually another chance to win something right now. So, the Hammerhead Karoo 2, which was launched last year. Ollie and Alex actually had a look at one over on the tech channel. But now they've just launched custom coloured add-ons. So you can change the colour of your head unit. There we go. Well done, man. On. Lots of different colours to choose from. Yeah, how cool is that? Right, and to celebrate, they've very kindly given us two hedge units to give away to you lot as well. How cool is that? To enter, just click on the link in the description. Now moving on to a quick shout out to the GCN shop. With all eyes on Italy, we thought we'd put a nice little bundle together. Got the nice pink water bottle, a t-shirt and some Italian socks. And you can actually get 10% off these now, but they are selling like hotcakes. So go grab your bundle now if you want one. Hotcakes or uh, pizza? What's the difference? Well, one's a cake and one's a pizza. I don't know what a hot cake is. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time for hack forward slash bodge. Right, we're going to start with uh, with a YouTube comment, actually, from Christian Clausen, uh, who wrote under the show last week, I feel like submitting 3D printed zip ties for hack or bodge. And to be fair, I wouldn't know what to do. Zip ties, not a massive fan if they're a permanent addition to your bike. 3D printed, automatic hack. So um, That's a tough one for you, isn't it? It is a tough one. So whatever you do, Dilemma. don't. Don't submit Someone 3D please printed do zip it. ties. You can't 3D <laughs> print a zip tie. Come on, who are you trying to kid? Uh, right, go on, man, on. you start things off? Right, first up this week, we have custom for fork mounts for bike packing. My Trek checkpoint doesn't have a fork mounts for an anything cage. Since I have a carbon fork and didn't want to clamp anything to it, I made a custom set of brackets out of aluminium and nylon spacers to fit the exi existing rack mount. There we go. Nice. That's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. Ingenious, I think. Um... It's a hack for me. Yeah, Marlon. definitely a hack, I'd say, yeah. And 90% of you lot voted that a hack as well. So, pretty comprehensive yeah. hacking, I'd say. Uh, next up, we've got this one from Mort. Um, an aero bar bridge slash light mount. 
Okay, I can think I can see a zip tie poking out. Uh, right, riding fairly narrow bars with endurance clip-on aero bars. It hasn't left much room to mount uh, a light for night riding or early morning riding. So I rescued some pipe from the skip at work and shaped it to fit snugly between the aero bars. There we go. Secured with a couple of heavy-duty ties. You can't hide from me. Ooh. That's a zip tie, isn't it? Heavy duty tie. <laughs> I'm trying to rename it. That's, now. Yeah, that's just marketing BS, that, isn't it? Um, I mean, to be fair, like that is quite neat, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's okay in this instance because it is yeah. kind of temporary, right? Yeah. Tell me it's temporary. Recycling, using old things. Yeah. Yeah, go on then. Yeah, go on, hack. That's a hack, yeah, yeah. all right. And 67% uh, of you lot thought that was a hack as well. So not too many people put off by the heavy duty ties. Yeah. Right. Oh, this, this next one, I can't, can't actually work out what's going on. Ah. But someone saw this bike, went out in Sandwich, Kent. And they can't work out what it is either. Genius or death trap? Uh, yeah, I mean... Is it trying to be like a... a what's the tandem with another one on the back? A triplet. A trip? Is that what it's called? Mm. Triplet? Yeah. Uh, I feel like they've just taken seats from the local school and just yeah. whacked them on. Well, what's slightly concerning is if you've also got children sat on the kids seats yeah which which does look quite terrifying uh, it does i can't imagine why you'd put kids seats on the back of a bike if you didn't want kids sat on it so no. uh should we say that's a bodge definitely doesn't Massive look safe bodge. at all that wouldn't no. affect health and safety would it no nor very fun either but uh, anyway there we go uh next up we've got this one from k bauer gcm plus on the big screen Hack. Hack. yeah uh it turns out the magnetic closure on my ipad case can also secure my ipad on the big telly so i can zwift and watch the gcn on uh, on the giro gcn on the giro the giro on gcm plus um i mean admittedly that that's fairly pants, isn't it? Like just sticking your iPad to a massive telly. Yeah. And there must be something slightly clever you could do, but still, if it gets you watching the Giro, that's I think cool. It, I think it should be the other way around. Yeah, good point, actually. Yeah. Little Zwift, big Giro. Yeah. All about GCM Plus and the Giro. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, 72% yeah. of you lot said hack, so there we go. It's a hack. Right, next up, opening the door to cycling. I was on a Saturday morning ride in Taiwan when this gate caught my eye. Whoa. I tell you what, that's a gate that would trouble John Cannings, wouldn't it? Do you remember John's hatred of Bianchi Celeste colour? That's pretty much Celeste, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I, I quite like that colour. Yeah, but I do too. Big I, fan. I feel like if whatever gate or door, whatever, it's not stopping much from getting through. It does like, look any, cool though. Anything could wiggle its way through there. Yeah, it does, it does look cool. But I sure, like that. Surely you could do something else with the frames instead of making a door. Hmm, good point. I mean, I'm assuming Maybe they're, they're all broken or cracked. I'm or... assuming they're cracked frames, yeah. yeah. And let's face it, you know, there's a lot of those kind of frames knocking around on a time I'm being home of quite a lot of production. Yeah. I'm sure there's a few, like, bits yeah, in skips. Yeah. I like that very yeah. much. Hack for me. Yeah. 74% of you lot said hack. Uh, Fenland Climber. Uh, Semi-fixed bike wash stand. Well, here we go. Remove the clamp from my park tool work stand, attach it to an old piece of steel tube, set a slightly larger piece of tube into the concrete. Result, a removable rotatable wash stand. Wowzers. That's basically you've just made a clothesline for your bike. But that is pretty good, much. That's good commitment, yeah. isn't it? Is, so is it cemented into the... Cemented into your patio. So, so you couldn't take... You couldn't take the, can you take the pole out? Uh, no, if it's... Cemented. Hopefully you can take a bit of it out, otherwise it's just going to be like a... Well, you're just going to ruin, that, your, you? ruin your shins, won't yeah. you, basically, or impale yourself on there. Um, Definitely a hack though, it's better, better than washing it on the floor. Yeah, I mean I'm slightly concerned about the, the risk of impalement, mm. but that's probably not going to stop me voting it a hack as well. And nor would it stop you lot either, 86% of you said hack for that one. Next up, we've got side-by-side -side tandem races cyclocross. In the April 27 show, there was a picture of a yellow side-by-side -side tandem. Friends of mine used one of these for an anything go cyclocross race. Oh my word. That we, looks amazing. We need to do this. We do. A cyclocross race on a side-by-side -side tandem. That is just genius. You don't have to run the whole way, do you? Uh, they're, maybe they're at the top of a steep bank. Yeah. Oh. But uh, who steers? Or do you both? You both steer. I think. Oh my! It's like push, push me, pull me, isn't it? That would be carnage. That'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Hank would love that. Hank would love that. That's got his name written. I on. wouldn't ride one of those with Hank. I don't think. <laughs> 
<laughs> Would it work if Hank and Connor did it? Wow. One side. So apparently, yes. Apparently, you can even ride one by yourself. Really? Yeah, I don't know how, but apparently you can. Uh, someone, someone, let us know in the comment section. I'm gonna yeah. say there's 100% hack. Yeah. Only 56% said hack though. Come on! Guys. What's wrong with you guys? Ah, well, never mind. Um, thank you, as always, for sending in your amazing hacks and bodges onto the GCN app. We've picked out a tiny proportion of the amount that we get each and every week. So if you fancy, do obviously go and check out loads more over on the GCN app now. And someone do some 3D printed zip ties, please. Oh, God. <laughs> It's now time for caption competition where we gave you this image and we actually have our first ever, ever double winner. And he actually won last week as well. Pretty sure he did, yep. He did and it is Re Raman van der Ben with the caption, is it raining hard out there? No, just a wee bit. Yeah, uh, brilliant. You know what, I'm quite, I'm secretly quite pleased that we've got a double winner, Matt. Yeah. Firstly, because it's unprecedented in 400 and something GCN shows. Uh, and secondly, because there's part of me that really worries every time we send out a single GCN Elite water bottle, that if you ride with two bottles, they're going to be non-matching. So That's now true. Raymond has got matching water bottles, which yeah. makes me so pleased. So there we go. Well done. Congratulations. And thanks for still playing even after you won last week. How cool yeah. is that? You might, you might win next week as well. He's it's like the Matthew guy. Vanderpool of uh, GCN caption competitions. Yeah. There we go. Probably plays on GMBN and wins that as well. Uh, right then, a photo to get your teeth stuck into this week. Raymond and everybody else out there. We're going to go with this one. Teeth okay. stuck into? like what you did there. You, well, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I meant to do that, man. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> edible Oakleys. So 2021. Okay, mm. if you think you can do better, just pop it in the comment section down below and um, pick a winner next week. Yep. As ever, you guys have been leaving some fantastic comments underneath last week's video and we're going to read some of them out. Starting off with the Domestique Challenge and Paul, still wondering how many mineral waters Dan could carry? A lot. Yeah. An awful lot, yeah, and he wouldn't spill a drop either. So. Uh, uh, to be fair, actually, he could probably carry quite a lot of water bottles as well. I'm pretty sure. He's quite good at that back in the day, wasn't he? I'm pretty sure yeah. it was. Yeah, that was one of his special skills. Uh, right then, underneath the GCN show last week, where we were talking about whether cycling is obsessed with weight, uh, Galen Keller said, I'm not overweight. Gravity is just obsessed with me, <laughs> which I thought was a really cool way of putting it. And then Hank goes mountain biking. Robert Walters Waters says, can we just take some time to appreciate the weapon that Hank is? The guy just attacks everything and takes it at his stride. What a guy. It's gonna make Hank's head even bigger now, isn't yeah, it? Well, should, yeah. we, should we just take a moment just to admire Hank? Yep, I think that's probably enough. Uh, and then SG said, uh, all these years of mountain biking, and to think that I've never thought of gyrating like an Amdram student before riding my bike. Top tips, GCN, thank you. Not a problem. I'll, uh, yeah, trust that you'll be doing that on the, the trailheads, just warming up. Definitely helps. So, uh, yeah. Right, moving on to what we've got coming up on the channel this week. On Wednesday, we've got Hazards You Might Not Think Of, Thursday, The Tech Show, and on Friday, we've got Clip Plus versus Flat Pedals. That's right, then on Saturday, we've got The Dream Ride, okay, which you've definitely got to check out. I'm uh, looking forward to that one. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, on Sunday, we've got Frame Material Shootout. So finally, we've managed to get aluminium versus steel versus titanium versus carbon. So, uh, so yeah, do make sure you check that one out. And then, of course, we've been talking about the Giro on and off throughout this whole show. The Giro d'Italia is on at the moment. It's live and on demand on GCN+. Plus. We've got highlights over on GCN Racing, just little short ones, uh, but the whole thing is available on GCN+. Plus Worldwide, although there are one or two territory restrictions as well still, but, uh, but yeah, do make sure you check that one out. It's shaping up to be a cracker of a finale, I think. Uh, and then also, two docs launching this week. We've got a brilliant film about two frame builders. Um, really, really good film, that one. Uh, and then also, Jenny Graham is island hopping in the Hebrides, which is a remote part of northwest Scotland, uh, an archipelago, and it's, yeah, it's jaw-dropping. So, uh, two bangers, I think, this week. Yeah, looking forward to watching them as well. Yeah, right. Manon, I think that's pretty much the end of the GCN show. I think it week. is, yeah. We better we go catch the end of the duo. Good points. All right. 
See you next week. It's um, <clears throat> it's actually a rest day today. You got, got a bit hope. excited. You got a hope so the matter. Yeah. But um, you can watch the world of cycling over oh, on uh, GCN Plus instead. Yeah, with me actually again, unfortunately.